According to the data released by the National Statistics Office, inflation has already touched a record-breaking 7.7%, which is almost double the rate that the RBI prescribes for smooth functioning of the economy. This is the highest in eight years. The Reserve Bank of India measures India's inflation in two ways. One is a whole price index and the other is a consumer price index. While whole price index measures inflation at the wholesale level, the CPI measures inflation at the retail or consumer end. The CPI is the most sensitive and is closely followed by policymakers, financial markets, businesses and consumers. This is the inflation at consumer level. In the consumer price index, food and beverage items constitute 46%. Miscellaneous accounts constitute 28.32%. Housing accounts constitute 10.07%. Fuel and light constitute 6.84%. Clothing and footwear constitute 6.53%. Pawn, tobacco and intoxicants constitute 2.38%. Even though fuel constitutes only 6.84%, it has a chain effect. The Indian economic scenario can be easily understood by this ball. Here the fuel prices are central to the economy. When the fuel price rise, the prices of all other commodities begins to rise. For this reason, the price of fuel is tightly controlled by the central government. But however, 80% of the fuel is imported. Hence, global fluctuations in oil price has a profound effect on the Indian economy. With the war ranging between Russia and Ukraine, Indian politicians are working hard to find an avenue for cheap oil. So what will happen? if the inflation gets worse. But first let's understand inflation. Inflation is nothing but price rise. If the inflation is at 4%, it means the price of 1 kg of banana, which was say rupees 50, will become 4% more, that it will become rupees 52 in the ongoing year. To calculate inflation, the Indian government fixes a base year, that is the year from which the inflation is calculated. In India, the base year for CPI index is 2012. So now, the CPI is at 7.79%, which means the price of goods today are 7.79% more than it was in 2012. 4% is considered the comfortable value of inflation by the Reserve Bank. In the year 1991, in the African country of Zimbabwe, the inflation rose to an unbelievable value of 7.96 into 10 to the power 10. Yes, you heard it right. It is one followed by 11 zeros. In fact, the Zimbabwe Central Bank printed banknotes of 100 trillion Zimbabwean dollars. Crazy, right? Soon the Zimbabwean dollars became worthless toilet paper and had to be discarded. Zimbabwe has now fully discarded its own currency and is using US dollars as its currency. But how did this all happen? In 1987, Robert Mugambe became the president of Zimbabwe. Immediately after coming to power, he forcefully took farmlands controlled by white farmers and gave it to blacks and those loyal to him. These new farm owners had no experience in agriculture, because of which the overall agricultural output of the country declined. Soon, there was widespread shortage. Food output capacity fell 45%, manufacturing output fell 29%, and unemployment rose to 80%. The banking sector also collapsed. With the farmers unable to obtain loans, agricultural output of Zimbabwe was now in complete disarray. Whites fled the country en masse, taking much of the nation's capital. Mugambe's government now started printing money to pay salaries, especially for the military, as Zimbabwe was at war with the neighboring Congo. Printing of money caused a phenomenon called hyperinflation. High inflation is very bad for the economy, as would reduce the purchasing power of the public. This is because the income of the people, especially the salary, is fixed and is raised only at the year end. High inflation would make people postpone purchase of all non-essential items. This would then have a cascading effect as more businesses would shut down. This would in turn lead to high unemployment. In India, the situation would become dire. For a meal or two per day, families might have to sacrifice their children's school, postpone medical treatments of their family members and give up other expenses which might not be of much significance in the present but would harm them in the long run. India today has adopted a market economy and just like the developed countries, Indian citizens are living in a consumer-centric society. This means 
the economy would grow only if the public is spending. India had three successive pandemic lockdowns, starting from 25th March 2020 to 31st May 2020. There are also state-wise extended lockdowns. It was observed that when people stayed indoors, their spending was reduced to online shopping and a great deal of other avenues of shopping was cut off. So when the lockdowns were over, the people came out and began to spend like crazy. That translated to a very high demand and this in turn was driving up the prices. But due to job losses caused by the lockdowns, the demand subsided after some time. But this year, in 2022, the Russian-Ukraine war has cut off the supply chain of many companies and also the price of crude oil skyrocketed. The US and its European allies have tried to completely isolate Russia by banning a lot of things. But the US plan hinged in controlling the oil prices with the help of its Arab allies like Saudi Arabia and UAE. But the Saudis did not heed to the American order to increase the oil output and hence the oil prices have hit the roof. It's quite understandable of the Saudi behavior as the present US president during his election campaign owed to make Saudi Arabia a pariah state, punishing it for killing journalist Jamal Khashoggi. In fact, Biden and his administration held talks directly to the ailing and sick King Salman, avoiding MBS. The US considers MBS as a mere defense minister and is contemplating a travel ban on him. To overcome this problem, Biden has ordered the gas to be released from the reserves and has increased local production. However, this is not sustainable in the long run. Biden now needs to find ways to lower the oil prices across the world. So coming back to India, the RBI has stepped up and increased the repo rate by 50 basis points, taking the repo rate from 4.40% to 4.90%. When the RBI increases its rate, it's a bad sign as it would slow down the economy. Naturally, the stock market tanked. By increasing the repo rate, all the loans would become costlier and any business expansion would be stalled as it is increasing the cost. This in turn would force businesses to postpone any expansion. When the spending dips, both in consumer and corporate level, the economy slows down. The idea is to bring inflation down to a comfortable level of 4% from the present 8%. Hence, for the next three months, the RBI would do all it takes to bring down inflation. Another painful thing seen only in India is that, when the fuel prices are high, the traders and businesses raise the price of goods. But when the fuel prices are slashed, the price of items do not come down automatically. For example, the price of a standard South Indian meal in Bangalore was only Rs 40 in 2020 but it is now rise to rupees 70. Even though the government has slashed the fuel prices multiple times, the price of this meal will continue to be the same. The price of items which went up will not come down. When inflation rises, it's the poor who suffer the most. The food price inflation surged to a 17-month high of 8.38% in April from 7.68% in March, while the fuel and light category saw a rate of 10.8% of inflation. The poor of the country, who are also the majority, are facing the brunt of this inflation more than anyone. LPG cylinder, which is a luxury for them, has alternatives, but food doesn't. It remains to be seen how India can manage inflation in the long run and improve the living standards of its citizens. If you like this video, please subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.